So everybody knows that Nashville is a huge destination city, a massive party city where bachelorettes, bachelor parties, and music events all happen under one big roof. The big news out recently by Nashville the Metro Council is that as of December 31st this year, if you want a short-term rental permit and you do not have one, you better be in line to get it. And that's what today's video is all about. Having a STR permit in town has become a huge business in recent years. And what I wanted to do today was talk about our past, present, and future, where we came, where we are, and where we're going. So essentially, there's two kinds of rental permits. You've got owner occupants, people that buy a place, maybe it has three bedrooms and they rent out one or the other two, or non-owner occupants. In the last few years, we've seen a massive increase in interest and communities being built for non-owner occupants, people that buy places, don't live in them, and rent them out day one. Where this has become problematic for the city is that the non-owner occupants have went into many neighborhoods and bought up a ton of houses quite frankly, limiting the number of houses available for sale to the general public, which has in turn driven the prices of homes way up. This has become problematic in my mind and one of the things Metro is looking to address in their moratorium. One of the other big complaints by hotels and hotel owners initially was that those that have Airbnb properties were not collecting the taxes on stays like hotels were. Fortunately, in recent years, the ground has been leveled and people that do own hotels and people that do own Airbnbs are required to play by many of the same rules. So here's where we are now. I probably get two to three calls per week and have so for about five years. I bet I've probably taken over 1,000 calls from people looking to buy a place and Airbnb it. And guess how many have done it? Probably no more than five. It's a big time waster for me. People call and say, I live in San Francisco. I wanna buy a place in downtown, say the Viridian. They see a big old shiny, nice, awesome condo building and think, hmm, this is blocks from Broadway. I can make a ton of money. Unfortunately, they're usually extremely saddened when I say, nope, can't do it and I give them a list of reasons why, and I have these conversations almost daily. I'm so sick of these conversations, and quite frankly, this is one of the reasons I want to make this video. One of the big things to understand if you do want to buy a place in town, or if you own one, is that there's a significant price premium on owning one in town. For instance, most units trade about 20% higher price per square foot than non-Airbnb units. Keep in mind, most of these units are not in downtown. It's one of the big turnoffs for people when they realize almost no buildings in the core of town can be airbnb -ed. Additionally, most prices on STR units start around 500. Most of the calls I get are for people looking for 300. It just doesn't exist. If you're watching this video and you're looking for one, just know it does not exist. You can call me all you want. You can call whatever real estate agent you want. It's not out there. So what's happened in recent years is developers have gotten really smart. They've done projects in recent years where they've had a SP, a specific plan, or a PUD for a planned unit development where the entire higher complex is STR eligible. So if you buy one of those as an investor, it's guaranteed from day one, you can rent it out. Conversely, other buildings in town, other condo developments that had fallen behind have made a big switch in order to help make their properties more desirable. Two that come to mind are the Riverfront Condos on 1st and 817 Third Avenue North, the District Lofts. In recent years, both of those had fallen way behind in terms of coolness and price per square foot and all these things. And then their boards went in and collectively voted along with homeowners to allow people who own units there to rent them out for up to 90 days a year and prices have skyrocketed since then. So where do we go from here? I believe the moratorium will be short-lived, probably just a few years. We're not looking at forever, but we've got to strike a balance between those that come and visit here for a few days a year and those that live here full time. Almost entire neighborhoods have been swallowed up with short-term rentals. I've got tons of clients over the years who get married, have kids, and then an STR pops up next door. They don't really like it for obvious reasons, so we've got to strike a balance there. So here's the reality, in my opinion, if you're in the short-term rental business. For the first few years, it was like printing money. I knew people who were making money hand over fist, trying to get their hands on as many units as possible. 
but in recent years, as many developments have been built and many more big time players and local yokel schmucks like me or other agents, other people have come into the field, margins have greatly compressed. People ask me all the time, Brad, do you have short-term rentals? The answer is no, I don't. Did I miss the boat a couple years ago? Absolutely. Am I missing the boat now? In my opinion, most likely not. I'd much rather have a long-term rental where I talk to the tenant two or three times a year than have a short-term rental where I've got to pay somebody 15% and 15 per month and they've got to go in, have the place cleaned and do all the scheduling and just call me all the time, needing little things, you know, towels, soap, this, that, coffee. I don't want to deal with any of that. So that's it. That's all I've got to share on STRs today. Where do we mess up? Let us know. I am by no means a STR expert, but I have many friends and agents who are. As always, we'll always be around. We're always here. Check out this channel. Enjoy our new sign. Subscribe to our channel, and we'll talk soon. Cheers.